A good day to one and all, and welcome to our webinar presentation today, where we're going to tackle all kinds of different topics related to learning to fly, how to get started in that journey, um, various success drivers, and, 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 and how to get you all the way through to your goal of ultimately becoming a pilot. Before we get too much further, my name is Eric Radke, and I'm delighted to be joined by Chris Moser from AOPA, um, who we're going to hear from a little bit more in just a moment. Uh, I wanted to review just a few housekeeping items before we get uh, too much further. Number one, and a popular question is, is the presentation recorded and will I be able to uh, access it in the future? And the short answer is absolutely yes. Um, you'll be able to um, come back to the Sporties webinar archives at sporties.com slash webinars or also explore the Sporties YouTube channel and you'll be able to see the content over and over. So if, if you have to step away, or turn down the volume for any particular reason, uh, definitely you'll be able to uh, come back uh, and view the content over and over again. Also, we would invite you throughout the presentation to submit uh, any questions that you may have or that may come up via the GoToWebinar software. Uh, and I'll also throw out an email address for you as well, which is cfi at sporties.com, very easy to remember. So even post presentation, if you have any follow-up questions or something comes up, uh, for either myself or uh, our co-host today, Chris uh, Moser from AOPA, uh, we'll be happy to disseminate those questions and, and certainly get those answered for you. Um, so I, I want to welcome, take a moment and welcome Chris Moser, uh, who is the Senior Director for Flight Training Education at the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. Chris, thank you so much for being here. Welcome. Hey, my pleasure, Eric. Thanks so much for having me. We're really excited and I can't wait to, to share what we've got and can't wait to hear what Sporties has got to offer. And you've got great stuff. So looking forward to this. So before we get too much further, Chris, I, I and I'm sure you'd probably agree with me, but I, I certainly feel this just this great energy. And, and I've been at this quite a long time and I know you have too, but it really feels like there's some really good positive energy surrounding fl flight training and people learning to fly and small airplanes in general. It just feels like a really great time to be investing uh, in this activity that we're so lucky to be a part of. Do you, do you feel that same sense of, uh, of good, positive energy? Absolutely. In fact, I was literally just in a meeting um, over lunch and we were talking about that exact same thing that um, we were looking back. And of course, the all the challenges and difficulties that COVID has brought, but we've got heard stories from folks down at Sun and Fun and, and just uh, flight schools that I've been talking to and just how many people have taken this opportunity to pursue flight training and i know the flight schools i've talked to are just busy 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 so yeah it's absolutely i think you're exactly right that is great to see um so what i do i, I want to let the audience know um here at sporties i lead our educational division and why that is relevant or what I, why i wanted to point that as is because i spend a lot of time throughout the course of my everyday activity as does chris talking to pilots thinking about getting into flying or just getting started, in other words, people just like you. Um, so I think we, we have some, there's probably a lot of commonalities, a lot of FAQs, so to speak, that we'll be able to address. Um, so, so, you know, know that we're kind of coming from the, that background and providing you the information today. So, you know, in terms of this, you know, positive energy surrounding aviation, um, know that uh, pilots come from all different backgrounds, all different walks of life, and they get into aviation for all kinds of different reasons. Um, whether you are thinking maybe of being a professional pilot, a lot of great opportunities out there for those on that type of track, and we'll talk some about that, or whether you're just thinking recreational hobbyist. But I have to say, uh, and Chris, you'd probably agree, given this past year, it seems like we all are more appreciative in value um, the time we have, the time we have on earth and the, and the activities, the limited amount of things we can do. And number one, it's always a great time to get started in the flight training journey. Um, you're going to, I think, find that this is a very welcoming, open community. Um, again, a lot of commonalities in terms of interest and what your ultimate goals are. Um, and these, you know, let's be, let's be clear, these are magical. These are magical machines. And you'd probably be surprised, I think, a lot of the audience out there at how much utility you can get out of light airplane flying. Reliability, safety, convenience, kind of the list goes on and on and on. Um, but ultimately, um, there's something for everyone, whether you're just an enthusiast 
or you're all in and you're looking to make aviation a career, there's something in aviation for everyone. And I would certainly encourage anyone out there, um, go take a flight, right? You know, a lot of flight schools, Chris, I, I, I know that, that we interact with, almost everyone has that opportunity uh, where they provide a discovery flight or an introductory flight mm -hmm. package. Uh, so call up the local flight school with nothing else. Hopefully we'll offer some words to inspire you a little bit and go take that first step of getting in the airplane, putting your hands on the controls. Chris, is there anything we can say to substitute for actually climbing in the airplane and, and breaking free of the ground for that first time? You know, I, I have to agree with you, Eric. I don't know that there's, I, I, I'm literally just remembering my very first flight, as you said that it was out of this little grass field. My brother had arranged it and he knew that I always wanted to fly um, when I was younger. And so we went and did it. And I could vividly remember that instructor giving us that briefing and rolling down the grass runway and taken off and it was cool and it stuck with me and even though i didn't wasn't able to do the training right then it was within a year or two that i was like i've got to do this and i ended up making it happen and and uh and going and doing it so i totally agree it's a great time to do it and and the other thing is you can do it no matter what you can do this it just get out there and try it awesome i have such fond memories of that very first time for me as well and for those of you who are on with us and we know that's a that's a significant portion um, you know, perhaps you're considering a career and opportunity. And I got to say, a lot of individuals I talk to, um, they don't necessarily know, and that's absolutely fine of where aviation may lead or may take you. But do know, if you haven't done a lot of research, that there is a just a, a ton of really great career opportunities out there. Timing is very good um, in terms of the health of the job market for the foreseeable future. People will continue to fly. We're going to continue to, to need to move goods around. We're going to continue needing to uh, train pilots. Um, our military branches, our various law enforcement agencies, other public service flying, they all need this, this healthy pilot population. And, um, you know, certainly if you can, like Chris has done, like I've done, if you can find someone that will pay you money to go fly airplanes, <laughs> boy, you, you've really won. You've won in that regard. Am I right, Chris? Absolutely, and in, in fact, even one of the things, of course, that I know both you and Eric, uh, Eric, both you and I do, is the is even getting into instructing. We're always looking for good instructors as well. So if you move up that path and you're thinking this is something I'd love to do, whether it's on the side or as a job, it's like you you start that training path and think I want to share this. We're always looking for good CFIs as well, and that's that's a hugely rewarding um, uh, whole process right there, and a hugely rewarding. Uh, activity oh, oh, that's, a, that's a great point. And in the general aviation, when we talk about use that term general aviation, uh, I'll define it broadly by saying we have these like, you know, three main buckets. And, and most people on you're familiar with the airline travel and you're familiar with the military. Well, everything else we essentially group into that general aviation bucket. And as Chris just pointed out, that is the primary training ground for all future pilots. Um, so wonderful opportunities as educators as, as well. Now, in terms of those first steps, you know, we highlighted one. Chris and I both emphasized the point that go take a flight. Uh, put your mm -hmm. hands on the flight controls. Even if you've flown airlines, that's vastly different from, from small airplane flying. Make sure you love it. Now, I'm going to kind of uh, ruin the end uh, for you. I'm going to give it away. Everyone loves it. Everyone loves it. I can't imagine not having <laughs> a great experience on that, on that first flight. But in other words, as we've emphasized, um, don't get lost in the details. That's wonderful that you're on with us today and you've taken that first step in, in that initiative of seeking some, some information and that's wonderful and that's good, but don't get bogged down too much. Um, information will naturally flow and follow as you uh, immerse yourself in the aviation community. You'll have access to some great resources, mentors, other peers that are kind of at the same level as you. So you'll be able to, you know, all that curiosity, uh, you know, some of that will be solved naturally in the course of pilot training. So don't let um, too much information, in other words, be an, be an excuse uh, to get to the airport and, and seek out that first flight. And, and certainly most schools that I'm familiar with, and this would be a red flag if it's not the case, they're not going to ask you to sign on the dotted line right. and commit to spending noodles of money and, and, and tons of times. If you want to go take a lesson, take two lessons, you, sh you should be able to do that. Um, Chris, would you agree with that, that there's you know, no need to overcommit initially? 
Absolutely not. And in fact, one of the things I would say is that some of the, the schools that I, I, I uh, help run a program that we do at AOPA of um, award-winning schools and so on. And one of the things that we see is that some of the schools that are really into this, they do like a little intro package. I, I know that one school has a thing called a Top Gun package. And so it's like it's like five hours of flight training, a little sim, a little bit of flying. And so you can do that. And it gives you a little bit more than just that discovery flight. So check those things out. And that way it gives you a nice feel for what it's all about. Um, so yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, so totally do it. Go find out more. And even if you've made up your mind or think you've made up your mind that I want to go earn a private pilot certificate. That really has become a, more of a generic term that we hear in aviation because that's that's what's widely known as, as the entry level certificate. But you might be surprised to know there are there are other initial pilot certifications. Some can be used as gateways. Um, some can be used to accomplish exactly what you want to do. If, if if you're going to be a weekend flyer, that's fantastic. Go flying on on nice sunny afternoons and fly in the local area and see the sites or maybe grab lunch um, you know there are these recreational pilot certificate options sport pilot uh, options smaller aircraft um, less passengers but there are other gateways out there so don't necessarily lock yourself into thinking that one particular path is for you maybe take to take, take some time um, to see what is available to you and again in that same vein of taking the first step and going to take a flight everyone gets started the same way taking the first flight and working towards towards that first solo experience, which is the, the first major milestone in your aviation training. And Eric, if I may too, one of the things I just wanted to reiterate, because you mentioned it, and I think it is so important, is don't be afraid to ask questions. And, and that whole information overload, it can seem, a good school is not gonna do that to you. And in fact, they'll say, oh, never mind. I know I just used an acronym. Let me explain that. Um, and so look for that too, though. They'll be willing to explain it. Trust me, you will be speaking pilot before you know it. But don't be intimidated by that. You will learn all of it and it will come. And like a good instructor is always going to know that, have that in their back mind of like, oh, I just used an acronym. Let me explain what that means to you and you'll pick it up. No worries. Well said. Well said, Chris. We're not going to be able to cover everything, obviously. I do want to highlight um, a resource that's produced by Sporties, and then we're going to move into some additional resources available from AOPA. But Sporties, studentpilotnews.com, if you're able to jot that down, make, it, make a mental note, student pilot news. That's really everything related to flight training. You can, do a, a, you can discover a, lo a, lot of, a lot of elements here, um, a lot of video-based resources, some previews of, a, of what the first flight experience will be about, uh, we'll explore some information related to those, um, you know, pilot certificate options and an ongoing kind of some ongoing blog content it, once you're in the process uh, to kind of help you along and, and share some of those experiences um, uh, of some others that might be in, in, your, um, in your same circumstance. And I have to say as a student pilot, and this is a 100% honest story, my membership into AOPA, the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, it goes back to my initial time as a student pilot. And I've been an active member ever since. This is about 25 years ago. And that came from me picking up a flight training magazine, which is still produced by AOPA and is a wonderful resource. Uh, but I can say that has been personally for me, one of my best investments that I have made in aviation, I think is a, is a membership to AOPA who, who looks out for our best interests uh, of all pilots. Um, to, um, you know, to have the freedom of the skies. So with that, I'm gonna turn things over to my friend Chris, and he's gonna to talk to you a little more about what AOPA is and some of those great resources and initiatives to help. Cool, thanks so much, Eric. And by the way, I just wanna read that newsletter. I know that I get your, I think it's the Fast Five all the time from Sporties. Yes. Yeah. And I have to say there's little things and little nuggets and I'll just skim through and I'm like, oh, and I, I was just reading one the other day. So there's stuff on ForeFlight. So it's the, the Sporty stuff is worthwhile. They're not just trying to, you know, they provide great products, but they're also just providing good information. So definitely check that out. I, I have to agree with Eric there. So one of the things, and I and definitely appreciate your membership, Eric, so that's a great endorsement. Um, one thing I wanted to explain was it's like when you're new to aviation is that what is AOPA? Like, what is this? And of course, um, we are just called AOPA now, but the official name, the historical name was Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. But the one thing I really want to make sure that I explain is that it's not just aircraft owners. It really is pilots. And in fact, I, I have this these couple of points here come from our kind of in our mission statement is that we are pilots. We are hundreds of thousands strong. So we've got um, pilots from all across the United States. We span 75 countries. And really what it comes down to is we are the largest aviation community 
in the world. And so we work to help each other out to represent those interests um, and to help each other just continue that community and keep flying. So it's all about community. And uh, we'd love to have you take a look and, and see if um, we might be able to provide something for you, which I'd like to share with you. So on that, on the next slide, I know we've got um, some things. Well, what does AOPA do? Well, the big thing we do is we bring pilots together. We do things like fly-ins, and I know I've seen the folks from Sporties there on multiple occasions um, all the time, uh, help help you fly safer, which I'll talk a little bit about, because I'll talk specifically about some of the things that we have for student pilots and people learning to fly. Uh, and then we represent pilots as well. So if there's any, in fact, I just, I saw something just uh, in my email uh, flow here at AOPA, and it was talking about um, a court case that just happened. And so AOPA is working along with some of the other aviation organizations um, just to make sure that, you know, the pilots are represented because believe it or not, uh, not everybody understands airplanes and or aviation, I should say, not just airplanes, helicopters and, and gliders and everything else. And so that's what we do is we help educate people so they understand what we actually are doing. So um, what I want to do is on the next one is just start talking a little bit about in general what we've got to offer, and then I'm going to highlight one specific program that we've just introduced. We've got some great Learn to Fly resources, and I'd love to point you to aopa.org slash learn to fly. It's right there under the picture. Um, so check that out, and it's, it's I think it is a nice compliment to all the great things that Sporties does. Um, in our Air Safety Institute, for instance, we have an institute that's sort of under the umbrella of AOPA that literally just provides information and courses on how to be a safer pilot. And some of the most popular things that we have right now are some YouTube videos, a whole series that they put out on flying safely. Uh, they've got online courses that cover safety topics. So it's a little different. It's sort of a, think of it as a supplement to like a ground school that you might get from like a Sporty's online program, which I really love. Uh, the courses there, like I'll focus in on a specific safety topic and, and going more into that. And then we've actually got, and this is the one thing, if I was going to jot something down off of this would be that Student Pilot Safety Center. This is free to anybody, um, AOPA member or not, and you can get in there and it gives you a nice curated list of all the things that the Air Safety Institute has to offer that would help out a student pilot. So definitely that's worth checking out just to go see it. And like I said, that one's free. You just go in and, and just take a look and see what's there. We've got things like flight training scholarships and that's for adults too. Um, we have uh, the flight, our flight training magazine We've got a whole pilot information center where you can call and talk to CFIs and then just to know if, you, if you're interested, you'd like what you see, you can sign up for a free six month membership um, for student pilots uh, to check it out. So cool. All right, so one oh. of the things that I'm excited, go ahead, Eric. Oh, I was gonna say, I'll, I'll mention Chris that, uh, you know, e e even as, as long as I've been participating in aviation and flying and in accumulated experience, um, I wanted to point out that th these resources will support you and be with you throughout your aviation journey, throughout your aviation career. Uh, I still regularly read and, and consume so many of these, these resources that, that Chris has mentioned. We, we really have to you know, accept the fact and embrace lifelong learning in aviation where we all continue to be students. Um, so you know, it's great to kind of get in this habit early, that, that thirst for knowledge and, and, and of being better at what we do. And, and these are all just, this is a great spot to be for all of those things. I appreciate that, Eric. And absolutely, I agree. I'm the same way. I I will take I even take some of the same courses over again. Um, you know, it might be a year or so since I've seen it, and I'll review it because I pick up the information. It's just that constant review. So it's just, just really well done stuff. Um, those guys at the, the Air Safety Institute do a great job on those. And heck, I still read Flight Training Magazine, so <laughs> I like that too. Um, one of the things I'm really excited to share with you is that we have just launched AOPA's Flight Training Advantage. And what this is, it's a uh, um, it's a new sort of training program that's adaptive. And that's the thing that's different. We haven't seen that yet in the industry. Um, and it's something that I've, I'm on the team that's working on this one. And what it does is that uh, in, in traditional lessons, you would often see like, you know, for, for a long time, we would have lesson one and it would have a certain thing listed, just think of paper. And then you go to lesson two and that's the next lesson. And then what'll typically happen is an experienced CFI will, they'll take that and they may adapt it to the way you're training. Like, oh, I know you've done well on these things, so we'll move you ahead a little bit here. Well, this program actually does that through um, the electronic system. It, it adapts to your progress. So if you're doing well, let's say on emergencies and, and radio calls, it'll let you progress faster on that. And then maybe there's some places where you need some review. Typically, I, Eric, you can probably back me up with this, landings always seem to be a challenge for folks. So. Um, so that said, this one with, you know, it would, whatever that th case may be, it will then let you review the places where you need to review and advance where you don't rather than 
um, sort of like the CFI having to um, do it on their own, this thing does it for them. It makes it easy to use. And so this is just a, a little uh, screen cap of what you see. And so this, we love this program. We think it's going to be really great. Um, and just in the sense of providing you a really clear way of per going through your training process. So in this, one of the things that you'll want to do, and I'm, I'm, I have a feeling that Eric, you might back me up on this, is that being prepared for your lessons will save you time and money. If you study at home and come in prepared, you won't. You will you have to pay your flight instructor less because they won't have to spend as much time going over things. Because if you got it, like I know for me, I can tell when the people have read, and I'm like, yep, you're good to go. Let's let's go ahead and get moving. Versus I've got to go through and pick every little thing to make sure you've covered it. And so in that, in AOPA is this we call it AFTA is the shortest short version of this AOPA flight training advantage. Um, it provides homework assignments for you for everything that's coming up in your lesson. So you can see right here in the graphic, the next lesson has um, some various maneuvers and including power off stalls and S turns across a road. And for each of those, it will provide a homework assignment, um, which is consistent of FAA. We've got the FAA handbooks in there, the uh, ACS, which is the Airman Certification Standard, which is basically just the guide to your check ride, um, and uh, AOPA articles. But the, the part we're really excited about is that Sporties has joined up with us. And if we go to that next slide, if you are a subscriber to Sporty's Pilot Shop as well, the, to the online course, it'll actually work with that too. So as it comes up, it'll show you, here's your Sporty's ground prep to get you ready for this next lesson. So we're super excited uh, about that and uh, and can't wait for folks to be able to take advantage of this. So one of the mantras um, that, we, that, that we message here and, and that we talk to new pilots about in particular, you know, when we get the question, what, you know, what's going to make me successful? How can I be a great student? How can I, you know, get through in the most efficient way to, to my end goal? We talk about own ownership. Um, we talk about taking responsibility and ownership of your, your own flight training experience. You're the consumer. You're investing the time and resources. Um, take ownership. Be an active participant. And, and what that means, well, this is a, a perfect example. Uh, Chris mentioned, you know, being prepared. <laughs> um, looking ahead in the syllabus. And that all starts, not to get too much ahead, but that all starts with having a, a written, a documented game plan. In other words, working from a syllabus. Uh, in, the, in the AOPA adaptive learning syllabus is an excellent option. Um, you know, you may have that option at the school of, of your choosing, but most important, have a plan. Um, have a plan in place and, and be in a situation Set yourself up success by being able to see what's coming up so that you can adequately prepare. And absolutely, and I know, Eric, you know I'm right there with you. I was, I was a school teacher, I taught for 17 years, um, also a flight instructor, and in fact, not only did AOPA do some research uh, sometime in the past, about 10 years ago, that showed that a syllabus is so important to a good flight training experience. But in addition to that, um, I actually just uh, completed a sort of graduate program. And in that, I did an analysis as well, and again, the syllabus was one of those factors that really does help in a sense of providing that organized instruction. And I know that we can both tell you too, just as flight instructors, if you study and going through our own flight training, the more you study, the faster you get through it. It makes it easier. And in fact, I can remember part of what drives me about this is during my own training, I remember during my private, asking my instructor, like, what are the procedures for doing a stall? Because I can remember being in the airplane and him telling me what to do. And I was like, can you write this down so that I can memorize it so that I can focus on flying the airplane? And so getting procedures down, being prepared, makes it easier to learn because now I can focus on what I'm doing in the airplane versus trying to remember the steps. Um, and so it's so, so key uh, to do that. And, and easier translates to a more enjoyable experience. Ultimately. Absolutely. And one of the things that we built into uh, AOPA's flight training advantage to that effect, as you can see here, is that we've got a checklist. And this is just a suggested checklist for how to do the maneuvers. Your instructor may have a slightly different way, and that's completely okay. We just gave one to say, if, if you don't have one of those for your school, we've got one in here that you can use. Uh, and it's got each step. And you'll notice here, there's different sections of it, but this one has the notes to the pilot. So it literally says, here's the step, here's the sort of the, the step. And then we explain, these are some of the things that you'll be looking to do. So for landing configuration, configuration, we're going to give you a brief explanation so you understand more of what's going on to help you be prepared for that next flight. And if we hit that next slide, and then the other part is, one of the things I know too that, and, and you'll have to, I'll be curious to get your perspective on this, Eric, too, um, working at the uh, at Sporties Academy, is that students, I know for me going through training and then my own students, they often ask, where am I? Like, how much more is there left to do? I can remember that feeling during my own training. And so one of the things we've got is we have, have a part that shows you uh, your 
like I can go back and look at my last lesson. I can see the notes that my instructor would have made. I can see what's coming up on my next lesson and, and review. So I can see what have I done and what do I have left to do. And I think that's so important for us to, as students to be able to, to know how to move to that next step. Would you agree that that's that something that you find at Sporties Academy as well? Absolutely. The big picture perspective is so critically important because that then allows you to figure out how these individual components relate to each other and how these dots are going to get connected. Um, so, you know, certainly another red flag. Uh, we, we've talked about a couple of these kind of red flag scenarios. If you find yourself in a situation where you're a bit unsure, um, that's the time to, to speak with your instructor um, uh, about, again, big picture. Uh, you know, what have I accomplished? What major components are remaining? And, and what adjustments, if any, do we need um, to, to get there? Absolutely. Um, and so if we go to the next one as well, I believe, yes. So this also shows, this takes out some of the mystery of it too, I remember. It was like, what's left? Because if you don't have a syllabus, and that's why whether, whether you use AOPA Flight Training Advantage or you use whatever syllabus, having a syllabus takes some of that mystery out because you can see these are the things that I've got left to do. And that way you can see that end goal and it keeps you motivated knowing I'm getting closer and closer and closer to it um, so that I can finish. And that's what we try to show here is we've got all the things that you've done and then you're able to click, this is actually in the, in the website, you're able to click and see what's still left. So I can see what have I done, what's completed and what do I have left to do? And you can see that progress slowly happening until you know, like, oh, I'm getting close, I'm, I'm almost finished. Um, of course, with your flight instructor having the final approval of signing you off for whether it's solo or going for a check ride. So that's the biggest thing is just, we really wanna show you that clear path to completion. And you wanna look for that, whether it's like this or another syllabus. So what we've, you know, hopefully illustrated, you know, so far in, in speaking to you today is that there are so many, in, in, you know, technology has just is, is made so much of this possible, but there's so many great resources that, that help you stay in control. So, you know, we talked about owning the experience and being an active participant and not just some passive, you know, not just a passenger, uh, so to speak, on board these flights, but all these resources we, we, we've spoken to. Um, they, they, they all speak to that. They, they all help us to that end of, of owning the experience and knowing exactly where we stand and staying in control of our own destiny. And that, again, just makes for, that will make you more confident. Um, that will make for a more pleasurable experience. And, and as we have both kind of alluded to, um, such a key component, and, and AOPA invested heavily in some breakthrough research uh, on this very same topic. But uh, another key success driver is the importance of working for a syllabus and also uh, perhaps investing in a home study course. So, mm -hmm. you know, once upon a time in aviation, and you probably, uh, many of you are, think back to your, you know, time in driver's ed, you know, comes to mind when you had to, uh, you know, sit through, uh, go to a traditional classroom and, and, and sit through kind of a class before you could start start you know driving the car or getting that hands-on experience and for many many years in aviation that's really how it worked that you would have a classroom component that you had to complete before transitioning in, into the airplane and and thankfully we, we've moved we've taken advantage of technology in the industry and we've moved well beyond that uh, to provide consumers with their choice and in a multitude of, of high quality high caliber um, home study self-paced learning systems and, and they, I, I call them systems because they've become so robust with so many different components that all fit together. And also, most importantly, uh, right, common theme, allow you to personalize the experience to make it just right for you. Again, all about owning the experience. And when we talk about video, I can't think of an activity that lends itself um, uh, as well to that to the medium of video and being able to put students from the comfort of their you know device sitting on their couch or their big screen TV whatever the case may be we can put you in the airplane nowadays we can put you in the airplane and we can explain concepts and you can help visualize uh, so gosh we're so far removed from that uh, the the old days of having to carve out a certain number of hours in the evening or morning to get to class, so to speak, when it can all be done from the convenience of home and you can view and review. So what's it do for you? It brings these concepts to life. It gives you, it gives you perspective. Uh, it gives you context. Uh, you can actually 
you know, when we talk about required maneuvers, you know, you're going to hear terms in pilot training, um, you know, like stalls, aerodynamic stalls, or steep turns, or slow flight and ground reference maneuvers. These are all things that that you'll learn to perform and accomplish. And these, you know, self-paced home study systems allow you to to, to see what those maneuvers are going to be like. They provide step-by-step -step instructions. So this all in the category of being prepared, as, as Chris talked about, which is gonna save you time, um, make for a more efficient learning experience. Uh, so you're gonna be you know, better prepared for each and, and every lesson. And then most of these home study systems also uh, either directly integrate or as standalone have components that, that very specifically and directly prepare you for the written examination. So part of the licensing process, which many of you probably have heard about or know about already, and again, if I could uh, you know, draw some parallels to the learning to drive process, you have a written testing component where you sit down at a computer and you uh, go through a multiple choice test. And then later on, you get in the airplane with an actual examiner to kind of sh you know, show them what you can do to, to get the license. So for that written test part, uh, again, very robust systems to get you well prepared. Uh, for going into the actual exam center and getting that written test completed. And one of the things I would just add in with this is, that, and what you're talking about with these this online uh, type of training like this, is it really helps you to be able to visualize and get to know it so well so that when you go to the airplane, you're spending less money with the, the engine turning, right? Because it's like, that's, and I, I just wanted to, to emphasize too that your goal in training is to make sure you can visualize. Like if you can do it on the ground, that's going to help you. And this kind of stuff will very much help with that because you can watch it over and over again. So now you go to the airplane, like, I already remember these procedures. Now I just got to practice what it feels like and actually make it Absolutely. happen. And, and typically with minimal investment. So, so to give you kind of a range and what your investment may be in kind of a home study system, you're talking about the equivalent of a lesson or two uh, with a flight instructor. So no doubt uh, in very short order, systems like this will pay for themselves over and over and over again. Uh, if I could just very quickly, um, as our uh, one of our sponsors today, Sporty's Pilot Shop, of course, we do offer our, our own option, our own system um, with, with chock full of uh, broadcast quality, uh, video, cutting edge video technology. If we're not showing you inside the airplane itself, we're showing you sophisticated animations, graphics, et cetera. To, to, uh, to simplify more of these complex topics. And also, of course, as I just mentioned, a, a commonality in a lot of the systems, a very robust, uh, dedicated test prep system, not only to help prepare you for the written examination, but also some dedicated uh, preparation tools to even get you ready for that practical examination when you're flying in the airplane itself, and a variety of resources um, to help you when you transition into the airplane, including its very own syllabus, um, and also the option in there to receive the endorsement to actually go take that FAA written examination. So it really is a full-fledged, complete system to get you kind of start to finish um, through this entire process. So it's kind of that gel or that glue, I would say, that, that, that holds the whole system together. Um, you do have the opportunity with most of these systems to, to give them a test, test flight, so to speak. Um, it, it's Sporties, you can go to sporties.com slash demo and you can preview all the different tools and see what you like um, and, and see if that, that, you know, you think a system like that will, will be beneficial. And one additional advantage that, that you have if you choose to, to go the route of the Sporties option is that we do have dedicated app platforms which you automatically get access to. Uh, so we certainly see, you know, Chris, I don't know if you've experienced it, this too with some students you work with, but what we're experiencing here um, with the, the, the prevalence of, of Roku TV, uh, Chromecast, all these great streaming options, um, we're seeing a return to the uh, people gravitating back to the big screen. You know, it used to be <laughs> wanted to consume all this on their, on their small phones or tablets, which you can still do, but gosh, these big screen TV options are, are, are really have exploded in popularity over the last few months. Absolutely. And it's funny because it just makes me think all we're missing is the old VCR tape to get to that format, right? But yeah, and let me iterate too that Eric is exactly right. And I love that in that Sporties program you have too is you have this practice test. And that is so key to making the test when you go to take it easier because you can just take the questions and, and kind of you know, like work on it and get used to it. When you go to take the test, you're like, I've already done this before. 
And so it's it's definitely makes it a much easier process, not so scary. So to recap, kind of, you know, where we've come from uh, in, in speaking to you today, we've we've talked about some key steps in making the first step in, in getting started. We've given you some some great online resources uh, through AOPA, through Sporties, where you can go and you can get information, you can get content. We've pointed out these resources that can stay with you throughout your aviation and journey. We've emphasized the importance of staying in control and taking ownership and being an active participant. Now let's kind of move towards, okay, um, you know, I kind of have my ducks in a row. I'm committed to this process. I love it. I love it. I love it. The great new energy we've talked about. I'm ready to make a decision um, and, and engage with a flight training organization, uh, you know, to start some lessons or, or to take a first flight. So where do I go? What do I do? So that's probably the next obvious question that we should address right here. You know, how, how do I identify a flight school? Well, let me first say that AOPA has, um, uh, you know, more great resources to help you locate, you know, a particular school in your area. AOPA also has, um, which is an effort Chris leads, these flight training excellence awards, which which helps identify um, kind of the, the the cream of the crop, um, the, the the best of the best, the the schools that um, you know have demonstrated success and and have processes and systems in place, um, because you certainly want to have a good feeling about your opportunity for success at a facility. So a point I want to make about choosing a flight school, so you, you know you can go and you can get directories and you can find places nearby, but that doesn't always tell you the entire story. So certainly some time in person at a facility uh, is gonna be extremely valuable to you. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, well, I'm brand new to this and I really don't have other schools to compare it to. Well, you know, I would say you're, you're, you're certainly an informed consumer in probably a lot of aspects in your mm -hmm. everyday life. And some of the same criteria that you use to evaluate any business, any organization that you wish to interact with, that can also be applied to the, a, a flight school. Um, you know, are they reputable in the community? Um, you know, what, something as basic as the clean, cleanliness of right. the facility right. itself. Uh, do, do they have a management structure? Do they have individuals to greet you when you come through the door? Do you have a good feeling? You know, I'm a big believer in just gut feel and gut relax, you know, gut reaction to, to a given situation. So how does it feel when I walk in the door? Is this some place that I'm really gonna get excited about uh, uh, going in? And, and Chris, I, I know you have some, some uh, great insights and thoughts on this particular topic. So, you know, what, what are some, I guess, other things that the consumers should be thinking about as they evaluate a flight school? Well, number one is the, is the key things that you're talking about is that gut check and, Think of it in terms of if you went to rent a car or you went to Chick-fil-A or, you know, to a, to a store, you know what good customer service is. And so you should expect those same kinds of things when you go to the school. Are they friendly? Um, I know for me, I had one school that I, I trained at and I walked in. It was like it was almost like walking into the old west with the saloon doors, you know, and everybody just staring at me. And it was kind of intimidating. And, a, you know, a school that's it's going to have good customer service is not going to do that. Now, it turned out they were quite friendly, but it was just that sort of they didn't quite have the welcoming part down. Um, when I first was training. So I would re definitely recommend that. The other part is, remember, you all have been through school and you know, I guarantee you, and of course I was a school teacher, so I'm gonna think this way, but I know you know who your good teachers were. So think, what were my good teachers like and what were the teachers that I didn't enjoy so much like? Look for those good teachers, you know what they do. They challenge you, they're friendly, you know, and it's like, and they're gonna be there in your interest. And you can just tell from that part of it so the same thing here, when you go, because it can be kind of a little bit, you know, um, intimidating maybe, I don't know if it's intimidating is the right word, but, you know, don't be afraid to ask and to say, I want to fly with a couple different flight instructors just to, and it's not so much that you're saying this one's no good. I just want to make sure I'm getting the right person because you're the one that's the customer here. And remember that you are the customer. Don't be afraid to say, I'd like to fly with, you know, one, two, three. I would recommend more than one, but at least two, maybe three flight instructors so you can get an idea of who is the one that's going to best fit you. And most good schools are going to try to do that anyway. They're going to try to match you up with somebody they feel like fits your personality. So just don't forget that. Use your gut check, like just like Eric said. Gut check, absolutely. And, it, it, you know, one, one item, it may be obvious, but I don't know that we've, uh, you know, expressly stated it, but you know, maybe you know a pilot, an existing pilot. Mm -hmm. Gosh, what a 
what a great resource there. Uh, so if you know someone or you know a friend of a friend that is a pilot or did their training, boy, having a personal referral just means so much. Um, that, that can attest to how they were treated and, and, and you know, what, what their experience overall was like, what their interactions with the staff were like. If you can get some personal referrals and personal experience, boy, that's everything. And I, and I can say that we, we encourage that. And I think any, any good reputable organization would, if you're coming to us for the first time, we, you know, we, we, our doors are open. You know, we, we tell individuals come back and visit when you want. If you, if there are, you know, other clients, other students here, talk to them, you know, find out what their experience is like. Maybe you'll get a personal recommendation for an individual instructor. And in a lot of these, uh, a lot of the criteria we've talked about, and, and even that kind of that, that gut check feel, these all also translate to the process then of selecting the right instructional fit, the right teacher for you. Mm -hmm. um, so the nature of pilot training is a lot of one on one activity. So that's a good thing, uh, a lot of individualized attention. But it's not all individualized. You know, you, you, you want to know that there is a support network and a structure surrounding that instructor. So as Chris points out, um, it's not a requirement or it shouldn't be a requirement that you take the first individual to say hello to you coming through the door or the individual that you were necessarily assigned. It should feel right. Um, it, it, should, it, it, it should feel right. You should enjoy that time you're spending with the instructor. I would encourage you um, to, um, you, you know, not come in um, with, with prejudices in terms of, of age or look or whatever the case may be. Uh, I can tell you that, uh, you know, there's a lot of diversity in the instructional community and, and you never know what that great connection is going to be. Um, so be open minded, um, you know, enthusiasm, patience. Um, these are just as important. Uh, you know, in my opinion, is the kind of technical knowledge. I mean, if a person is certified, they, they have a license to teach. That says a lot about their capability. So what's going to feel good? You know, who who can you um, anticipate, you know, spending a considerable amount of time in fairly close quarters? You know, Chris, what what additional, I guess, elements might you add to the, you know, evaluating the instructor? Absolutely. Um, one of the things too that, and I want to just emphasize the point you're making too. If I know one of my best instructors during my private, and I had, I had a couple just because of you know, sometimes people um, they leave and so on, and I was doing it over the course of a year. Um, is one of the things I one of the my best instructors was this young guy that was just out of just out of college uh, as a flight instructor. He was amazing. He was enthusiastic. He had procedures that I was looking for that I remember I kept begging for. He had. He's like, here, I got them. I'll just I'll copy this for you and let you have it, so you can study. The other thing is a good flight school um, also will help their instructors, and there is definitely a collegiality that happens where we talk and share tips and things, and then we might say, you know, hey, I've got, I'm, I'm trying to teach this one thing, and I'm having a hard time with that. The, there'll, there'll be mentor instructors that will help them. So if you see an atmosphere like that where the instructors are helping one another, trust me, you are getting better than just one good instructor. You're getting an entire team of instructors that can help share and help you uh, through that training process. So I think that that is a key thing. And the only other thing I wanted to mention was that I know that for me, and maybe I'm showing my age here, but I remember being like a teen, like a young teenager, uh, seeing Top Gun for the first time. And, you know, I want to be that. That's what I want to do. Right. And for me, it was actually an X-wing fighter pilot when I was a little kid and watching Star Wars. But the the thing we want to also be aware of is that we, I love the, the, the things on the slide that Eric has put here that you know, professional demeanor, enthusiasm, experience. So make sure that you're, you know, that you always feel comfortable and that they are acting like a professional. That is so key. They always make you feel safe. They take that into your consideration because a good instructor is going to make sure that you are doing things the right way. And if you eventually want to become like a fighter pilot, we have special airplanes for that that are perfect for it. And you can go on to aerobatic training um, in your in your career as well. And I'll sum this all up by saying. And I would say this to our instructors. I would say this to any student. If the, if you do not feel at the end of a given meeting or session learning activity, if you don't feel that you've gotten that individual's best effort, then then that's another red flag. That, that that's a, that's time to to start asking questions. Um, it's never too much to expect you're going to get that individual's 100% best effort. Absolutely.
Moving on to some you know, additional FAQs, very popular questions that, that everyone has on, you know, at, at the top of mind when, when they're considering getting into the, the, the pilot training environment. Um, probably one in, in kind of 1A is how long does it take and, and, and how much does it cost? So from a cost perspective um, and time, per, so from a cost perspective, I like to break it down and you know, what, are, what is a typical lesson or learning session you know, going going to cost and and these costs certainly vary depending on the area of the country that you are in. Um, certainly, I think it's reasonable in the in the Midwest area where you know where I am located. Um, it's typical to spend between two hundred and two hundred and fifty dollars uh, for a typical flight lesson. Um, you know, maybe partially depending on the instructor, partially depending on the type of aircraft you're flying. And if you kind of uh, extrapolate that out to the, the the total training time it's going to take to earn a private pilot certificate, which can, you know, I would say on the lower end is going to be in that 50 hour time frame on the higher end could be, you know, upwards of 70 hours or so. You know, you're in that 10 to 11,000, maybe as much as $15,000 for a private pilot certificate. If you choose one of the other gateway certificate options, of course, it, it comes down for that. But so much of that answer really depends on you. And, and Chris and I have, have given you hopefully a lot of ideas and a lot of tools, a lot of strategies that you can employ to make it efficient, make it efficient from both a time and, and money standpoint. And we know, Chris knows, AOPA knows from its research, we know from our experience, scientifically speaking, that a, a, a good efficient you know, use of your time is, and continuity is very important. It doesn't make sense to have a lesson take multiple weeks away from flying. You know, just think about learning a foreign language, right? If, 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 if you don't use it for a period of time, it degrades quickly. So, you know, we certainly advocate for a, a two to three lesson per week cadence or frequency. We, you know, we believe that that gives adequate time to prepare, do the necessary preparation, not to be uh, so overwhelming that it takes over every element of your life, right? Because uh, we want this to be fun. Um, and, and and Chris, I'll I'll let you respond to kind of some things that that you hear from pilots in training uh, about frequency. Uh, I th I absolutely agree that that two to three times a week is great. Um, other tips that uh, I would give you as well to to that is is that study at home, like we've already mentioned, and I'll reiterate it again, because that is how much I believe in it, but that will help you in the sense of being prepared so that you're not spending time relearning things. And that's where, like, just like Eric said, that uh, that, that steady cadence and that um, sort of freshness of the curriculum will help you with that. The other thing I'll, I'll throw out as a tip, and I have to forgive me, Eric, because I don't, I don't recall it being on the slide coming up, is but using a, a simulator, which I know you guys did a whole uh, webinar on um, in the recent past here. And and so that is a great way to do it. So in, in those instances where maybe you can't get out and fly, maybe the weather's bad, using the sim at the school if they've got one, if you've got one at home, that is hugely helpful to, again, let you practice these procedures, and that will help bring the cost down. And one of the things to think about, we were literally just chatting about this uh, in a that meeting I talked about, is that you keep in mind, too, that you're, you're definitely making an investment um, in something that will last you for a lifetime, really, because it's like we always say, once a pilot, always a pilot is that, you know, it's like, think about it. a lot of folks will um, make a, an investment in like a motorcycle or a boat. This is a similar type of thing. In, in the, um, and just, you're gonna put that investment over time. It's not all at once, it's a little bit at a time. But I tell you what, I don't regret $1 that I spent on my flight training, because uh, in fact, I just kept going. I just kept spending and kept going with my training because it's like, I loved it. I, I love what I do and I love what I get to do with flying, so. Sure, and the pilot certificate doesn't, ex it doesn't expire. And in terms of, you know, also related to this question of, of time and money, um, I, I would caution everyone, and it seems to be just a natural tendency that we all want to do is kind of compare ourselves to the next pilot and, and how they're progressing and how much time it's taking or how much they're investing. And, and I would, and, and some of that is healthy, absolutely, but I would caution you and, and, and just kind of give you the reality of the situation that that no two pilots are going to get to the exact same proficiency level at the exact same pace at the exact same time. That's just kind of not in the cards. You know, this is part physical skill involved and, and, and just like, you know, Chris is a way better golfer than me and, and, and probably picked it up, you know, much quicker. I'm never gonna be as good as Chris. Um, so you're gonna have that in aviation. Um, so if you're, you know, 
if it takes 20 hours to get the solo versus 25 hours, I, I would not get too bogged down in those types of comparisons. You know, ultimately it will start to even out um, uh, the deeper end of the, into the syllabus that you get. Um, so again, kind of focus on you and, um, you know, what you're doing and working with your instructor to get around any, any roadblocks. And in fact, I wanted to reiterate that point you just said, Eric, too, is that getting, there's been in the past a tradition of like, how fast can you get them to solo? And actually, we've done studies at AOPA and the Air Safety Institute showing that that's not necessarily a good idea. It's actually better maybe to, even if you delayed, maybe you're like, you're not quite ready to land, start in your cross-country training and then come back and do the landings when you're ready to do the solo when you're ready. It makes you safer and more experienced. And that's what you want. And you'll all end up pretty much about the same place. That's why we have kind of a national average. We, we know somewhere most people say between, what is it, usually about 50 to 60 to 70 hours for most people to do a private. And it depends on how often you're training. Sure. Absolutely. So, you know, Chris, what, what, I know you've experienced this as, as a teacher. I've experienced it. But you get a student, you know, graduate, so to speak, earns the certificate, and then they, and then you get the question kind of now what type thing that they've been, um, you know, so immersed in the training process, they've lost sight of almost why they were here in the first place. So in other words, we hope that the training experience and the training environment is fantastic. But remember, that is just to get you to that point of being a pilot. And now literally the sky's the limit, kind of pun intended right there. So let's address that next question. So, okay, I have the license in hand. Now what? Uh, well, number one, this is a theme we both touched on earlier, um, the importance of embracing that lifelong learning um, mentality. Um, there's always something to learn. There's always something more to practice. There's additional courses of training um, that you can possibly participate in. There's some just great innovative uh, proficiency programs in the airplane, online, safety programs. AOP, AOPA is chock full of them. Uh, Chris pointed out a lot of those resources earlier. Um, AOPA and even other associations will give a lot of ideas industry trade shows, fly-in activities. Um, there's always something to do with a pilot certificate. Um, Chris, what would you add to, you know, to that? And, I, and I'm, I'm assuming you can probably share some stories too about kind of some pilots being lost beyond uh, you know, that two to three day a week training regiment once they have that license in hand. Absolutely, I mean, it happened to me. I remember that happened to me, like, what do I do now? And one of the things that we know um, that AOP has looked at is that getting involved with a group and luckily, like you mentioned here, there are associations and groups. There are literally, and if you go to Oshkosh or Sun and Fun or any of these air shows, they'll be there. There are groups of pilots that do everything under the, uh, the sky. Like there's pilots and paws. So if you're really interested in maybe doing animals, they have these charity missions that you go flying. You're moving animals around to get them to an adoptive home. Um, I, I personally play music. And so there's the flying musicians. I forget the and so like they, it's like these musicians that get together that fly airplanes and then they play music together. And so anything you can imagine, there's a group that does that. And what we've found is that folks that get involved in a group like that are much more likely to keep flying because now you've got that sort of that community that helps to support that. Uh, in some cases, I know you're going to talk about here shortly, a way that those groups can actually help you lower the cost of flying as well to continue to do that. Um, and so they will keep you encouraged and help you stay proficient and safe and, and sort of keep that community and the last part of this that I'll say is that, you know, even for me, I know that for me, when I was younger, I was kind of shy and I would be a little hesitant to maybe meet new people. But one thing I have found over time is that when you meet another pilot, all of a sudden it's a three hour conversation about airplanes. And I don't know if you've had that experience, Eric, but it's like you meet, we have this common bond. And so getting together in groups with other pilots as all of a sudden there's all kinds of conversation and you just have these very similar interests and, and things that will just lend itself to creating these lifelong friendships. Oh, well said. Um, the, the, I just treasure the people uh, in aviation in the community. Um, and I love flying. If flying stopped tomorrow, I think it would be the people uh, that I would right. miss the most. So yeah, getting involved with the community, uh, so very important. And, and so, you know, a natural extension of that is, so if I'm going to participate, uh, you know, fly to some shows or do some charitable flying, as Chris alluded to, or join an association. Well, how do I get my hands on an airplane? Uh, uh, what's next? Uh, you know, aircraft ownership, uh, which is certainly a possibility. That's kind of its own thing. It's its own animal. Um, 
there's a lot of uh, great content out there online, other presentations that, that dedicated to that very topic. So I, I would certainly encourage you to go seek out some of that information if you think airplane ownership is in your future. But there's there's some there's ways to bridge, um, you know, flight training and maybe owning your own airplane. And, you know, that involves uh, rentals, um, getting involved in, in clubs or groups like Chris just mentioned. That can be two partners getting together. That could be, you know, 20 partners together to, to form a flying club, uh, whatever the case may be. And, and Chris, I'll ask you, uh, if you if you wouldn't mind sharing um, um, some of those res great resources that AOPA has available to, to help individuals get involved with these groups. Absolutely. So as part of the You Can Fly program um, that's within AOPA that I work on, we have a four-pronged approach. One of them is the flight training initiative where I work, but we also have, and we have a high school program for kids that are learning. But the, the one that comes along with this is our flying clubs program. So if you're interested in potentially getting a flying club going or trying to find a flying club, we have that those resources. We have a flying club finder on our website. Um, there's a whole uh, handbook basically that's there that can help you like go through the steps. And we've got two folks, um, uh, in addition to some other folks around the country, we've got two folks right at our headquarters that will literally walk you through the steps of how to do it and answer all your questions. They have seen all of it. Um, it's amazing. And so they will help you get this going. So it's a, a great way to have that community built in and to share the cost. Because think instead of paying the whole cost of an airplane, now I'm only paying the 10th of an airplane or whatever it might be. And it just, it makes it much more accessible for everybody. That our, our hour has flown by. We've covered a lot of ground. Um, we, we talked to you about that first step, going out to the airport, picking up the phone, scheduling on a flight. Um, we talked about a lot, so many of those great resources to, 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 to help you gather more information, but we cautioned you against getting bogged down in too much detail initially. We talked about those support resources. We talked about the importance of a home study course. Um, we talked about the you know, criteria you should use and, and elements you should consider when looking for a flight school and looking for a flight instructor. And hopefully we also encouraged and even inspired you to think about license in hand and now what can I do with it? Um, so again, this, you know, our, our content today wasn't meant to be exhaustive, but it, it certainly was meant to uh, inspire some additional thought, uh, you know, spark some additional curiosity. And, and again, help emphasize that this is just a, a fabulous time um, with, with our precious time kind of here, here on earth to, to think about getting involved in the aviation community, the aviation lifestyle, um, you know, getting involved with light airplane flying. So with all that ground we've covered, Chris, uh, I guess I'll invite you. Did you have some closing thoughts, um, you know, for our audience today? I, I just want, yeah, same things, Eric, in the sense of this is a, it is a great time to do this. I know that both Eric and I are certainly willing to help you if you have questions in this process to reach out to us. Um, we've got, I know that Sporties has got lots of information on Learn to Fly. We've got the website aopa.org slash learn to fly. Um, you can check that out just by Googling that or, or putting that in. So please reach out to us. Let us know what questions you might have. And um, we were, I know that I'm more than willing. I know Eric's more than willing to, to help you kind of get to that next step and, and make sure you're making the right steps because we're glad to give that advice. So that's aopa.org slash learn to fly. I'll also mention once again, the studentpilotnews.com resource that you can go also for information. If we did not get to your question during the presentation, um, or if you think of a follow-up, as Chris mentioned, we're willing to help. Um, we're typically very easy to find. I will also throw out a closing email address, cfi at sporties.com, whether you have a message uh, or a question directly for Chris uh, or, or for me. Uh, we'll be happy to get that question to the right person and get it answered for you. So with that, and, and for Chris Moser and the AOPA team, I'm Eric Radke. Um, and, you know, on behalf of Sporties, we really appreciate you being here with us today. We look forward to seeing you at the airport really soon. So um, best wishes on your journey, so to speak. And um, good luck, safe flying to everyone. Bye now. All right. Bye, everybody.